2019, unfortunately, was a bad year for sudden death syndrome, and also soybean cyst nematode is out there all the time as well. Well, you might wonder, why are we packaging together sudden death syndrome and soybean cyst nematode in one topic here on the show? Well, the reason why is because some of the treatment methods are the same, and quite often what we find is if you have soybean cyst nematode, your sudden death syndrome pressure, or just how much yield loss there is, becomes much worse. Let's talk first about SDS, because why was 2019 a bad year? There are a lot of farmers that I talked to in the spring who were delaying their planting, not by choice, but due to the weather conditions that we had. And they said, you know, the one good thing about this, if I'm planting soybeans in June, I'm not going to get sudden death syndrome. Well, that was not the right thing to say because they certainly did get sudden death syndrome. Here's two big things that led to more SDS problems in 2019 and in SDS problems in areas that normally don't see SDS. The first one was poor drainage. I've talked to many farmers who had more SDS than they've had for years, and they said, you know what? I had wet soils for so long, I need to split my tile lines, or I need to tile this part of the field or this whole field that hasn't been tiled before. That was a big issue. If we can't get water away, we're just gonna have more of many different types of diseases out in the field. The second cause of SDS this last year that made it so much worse was compaction. The fall of 2018 in many of the areas in the upper Midwest didn't allow for tillage and it was a wet harvest where there was some compaction out there that didn't get addressed. I talked to a number of these farmers that had SDS who said, you know, the only tillage I did was just lightly come over the top of the field cultivator just to level things out. Those ruts never got fixed and guess what? In those parts of the field, I saw worse SDS. So I would say this, first of all, going into 2020, fix the compaction wherever you possibly can. And if you've got drainage issues, fix them now before you get that crop out there that's going to suffer. I'll be honest, on our farm, to fix both of those issues in the spring, almost impossible. How am I gonna fix compaction in the spring? How am I gonna fix drainage in the spring? So you, you start thinking about that and you go, oh no, I, I'm done. There's nothing now that I can do this spring. Yes, yes, there certainly is. So one of those is we would encourage you to consider seed treatments. Olivo has been out for the last few years. Saltro now from Syngenta has just come out. Both of those do have some activity on sudden death syndrome. They also are gonna have some activity on soybean cyst nematode. So if you've got a bad issue or really worried you're going to have a bad issue, you can certainly put that seed treatment out. The only bad thing about that is now you have to treat all your seed with the seed treatment, my point is you're going to get the treatment on every acre. You're going to spend the whatever it is, $10 or $12 on every single acre. Well, maybe not every acre needs the treatment for sudden death syndrome. What you could do if you've got a multiple variety planter is have one variety treated and put that variety in your SDS area and have that be the more tolerant variety. And then for the other areas, do whatever you want and you don't have to have that Saltro or Olivo on the seed. Well, I'm glad you brought up varieties, Brian, because I think this was the other problem that we had going on in 2019 is due to the delayed planting, we had a lot of farmers across the country switching the varieties they were going to be planting. So maybe you're planning on putting a 3.0 maturity out, all of a sudden you had to switch back to a 2.5 or a 2.0, and whenever we get varietal switching, it makes me so nervous that we're not gonna get the right defensive traits out there. Because pre-planning is great, and you can pre-plan just like Brian was laying out, hey, let's take that variety that has really good tolerance to SDS, and let's make sure we've got that in the plan, but then all of a sudden when you switch maturities, many times farmers were rushing. I know this happened to so many guys this year that it was, hey, I can get a field in, let's go get some seed quick, and we forget to ask those extra questions. So make sure that you're planning for the defensive traits that you need like SDS tolerance going into this year. All right, when it comes to soybean cyst nematode, that issue's been out there for a long time. And I mentioned that Saltro and Olivo would have some activity. There are certainly other products like Votivo, Clariva Complete, and many others that you can use as seed treatments. The problem is, again, you gotta put it on all the seed. 
So we find cyst nematodes in hot spots, and yes, absolutely, the seed treatment pays there. But the problem is, is it going to pay on average across the whole field? In a lot of cases, no, it does not. So I can't really tell you that for me personally, I'm going to make a lot of recommendations where I say, if all you have, your only concern is soybean cyst nematode, treat all your soybeans. I, I would rather have you just pick the right variety and go from there. The other side is, worst case scenario, sudden death syndrome and soybean cyst nematode do not affect corn or wheat. So plant a non-host crop for even a couple of years and you'll see your SDS and your SCN problems drop off quite a bit. The other thing, Brian, we get a lot of questions about other soybean cyst nematode resistance sources like Peking, for example. There are a few Peking varieties out there that are worth planting. I know over the years we've said quite often, man, this new Peking variety came out and it just didn't yield. And that still is the case. We still do see some coming in the market and they just aren't worthy of placement yet. But there are some that are pretty good. So talk to your seed supplier about this. See if there are some varieties uh, that they can show you have some proven yield data and are worth planting. That would be great. The other thing, like Brian had talked about earlier, variable variety planting. If you've got a planter capable of that and you can put the Peking variety just in your SCN hotspots, that would be a great strategy as well. All right, last thing. So we've talked about all the planning up front and planting time and seed treatments. How about foliar fungicides if you've got sudden death syndrome. And you might be wondering, well, are there any fungicides labeled? Actually, yes, there's one. Fortix is labeled for suppression if you spray at R1, so that's at first flower. The big thing with sudden death syndrome is we often see the symptoms later on in the year. It's R3 or R5, R6, and we'll, Darren and I will start getting calls saying, hey, I think I have sudden death syndrome. Okay, well, it took that long for the symptoms to really show up in the plants. But you know what? That infection occurred much earlier. So you've got to be treating right at R1. And I'm not going to tell you that it's going to gain you 30 bushels or anything like that. But can it help? Yes. Can it pay? Absolutely. Soybean cyst nematode and sudden death syndrome are a big problem in 2019. We don't want to see that on the farm in 2020. That's why we're talking about it on today's show. The other thing we're going to focus on today is our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? 